Well, here I am at the Organic Show in Olympia in London, and I've just been down there uh, working for the Organico uh, stand, cooking some fish dishes from Tin Fish. And this is all sustainable fish, and it's Charles there, he's a, he's a really passionate guy, really into what he's selling and doing. And I think that that actually sort of rubs off on me. And what I'm trying to do is get across to the general public here that you can use tin fish to make really interesting dishes. It isn't a case of just opening it up, putting it on a plate, pile of salad. You can come up with something a little bit different, with a little bit of effort. And okay, yeah, I'm a trained chef, but anything that I do, and I've done down there, is all easy to do. It's store covered dishes. Really, really simple to do. So, also what I like about this show, everybody down there, all the stands, they're all like-minded people, whether it's from perfume to oils to Charles's fish and his dried products as well, the Organico stand there. It's all really, really interesting stuff that they are so passionate about, and it's us as consumers that need to buy into that. I'm actually, uh, they've got a store around the corner, so if you, once we've done this, if you have a little taste and you're a bit interested, and if you pick up any tips, then that's great, but go and see those guys, because they know all the facts about the, uh, the product, and, and what it is, is I'm here promoting um, the, the fish, the tin fish products they've got. Um, it's something new that they're really trying to push on, the fact that it's not organic and sustainable, but it's not actually what happens in the sea, it's what happens on the land, because the fishermen and the communities that are actually canning this, processing it, and catching it, have, have inevitably got to buy stuff to get them out to sea. So that's whether that's diesel, whether that's equipment, uh, clothing, food for themselves and the family. So the whole thing is they're trying to pull it in that it's actually, um, you know, you could say, yeah, well, the sea is organic, but what happens on land, more often than not, ends up getting washed into the sea. So, but these guys are really trying to make an effort. And what I wanted to do was come up with a couple of dishes, or three dishes I'm going to try and attempt in the time we've got, using tin product. And being a chef, you know, you always poo-poo the fact that tin food is, is processed, it's done, it's, it's, it's a bit nasty because it's not fresh. But some of this stuff is actually picked and processed, caught at its peak. So stuff like the herrings and the mackerel is fished when, when there's, the fats are in it. There's this thing, there, there's a lot of Chinese chefs using um, mackerel in the winter because the oils are better in it and you can actually eat it raw. The summer stuff that you catch when you're on holiday, you put out the flies and, you, and, and, and the, um, the feathers and you catch all these mackerel, they're not as good as, as they are in the winter. So these guys will actually fish when they're, the fish is at its best. So the natural oils, the omega-3 oils are better in a tin product because they're fished when they're at the peak um, in, in their season. So. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, um, this sustainably fished mackerel fillets in a white wine uh, marinade. And the juice, I've opened a couple of tins up. What I'm going to do with the juice here is actually create a sauce. And again, you know, you could actually just open this, that simply open it up, put it on a plate, a little bit of dressing, pile of salad, and off you go. What I want to do is try and come up with something a little bit different with a little bit of application so that you transfer a humble tinned product into something that is a little bit more like um, like you put a bit of care and a bit of attention and a bit of effort into it and you produce something that actually is quite exclusively yours. Now, I'm going to flavour this with basil, but if you don't like basil, you chuck in uh, thyme or you put in um, parsley. It's really down to you and I think that's the whole thing about food. It's got to be very, very personal. So, whatever's in here, yes, it's okay as a product, but you can actually change it. You can create something, you know, yourself. Uh, something different. And all I'm doing by boiling down those juices that the, the fish has been tinned in, um, and that's obviously it's got the fish juice in there, but it's got the white wine, is you're removing some of the acid. And it's the acid that you want to get out of there because when we're going to put cream in there, it will split. It has a tendency to split or separate. What I'm going to do with the, the mackerel fillets, you've got the, the, the mackerel fillets are actually cooked or processed with lemon and uh, some carrot in there, and obviously seasoning, spices. So I don't need to do anything to this part of it. What I'm going to do is affect a sauce here with double cream, and I'm going to reintroduce acid. I'm going to put some lime juice in, and as I said, a lot of um, a lot of uh, basil from the back here, and maybe a little bit of thyme as well. So first thing I need to do is is get a little bit of shallots into the uh, into the mix. And again, you could use shallots, you could use onion, you could actually use spring onions. Um, the, the idea with spring onions is obviously you wouldn't need to cook them. They're a much uh, softer fibre. So, just very, very quickly chop some onion up. A little bit of shallot goes in. 
And I'll leave this quite coarse because you want to add texture because the only only drawback really with, with uh, canned and tinned foods is the fact that there's no texture. Because of that uh, pasteurization process, everything breaks down. So by adding a little bit of texture, so some coarse chopped uh, shallot, we cook it very, very briefly, it stays a bit crunchy. We're gonna use some pasta, and we've got some cooked pasta here. Again, wanted to try and do this as real time as we could, but actually, I don't think you want to stand there and watch me boil pasta, because I'm sure you guys at home boil pasta better than I do, because to tell you the truth, in the kitchen environment at work, and I'm sure Lee will, will back me up on this, we have people to boil our pasta. We do not boil pasta, please. You know, we, we make the mess, we move along, and someone's behind us. But at home, we can't do that. And the amount of earache I get for using every pan in the house and then having to clean it all up, so, I didn't want to stand there and, and go through making uh, boiling plain pasta, but we've got some organic pasta, and that's another arm of Organico that they do around the corner, is um, they do the pasta products. So we're going to use some cooked pasta in with our um, mackerel fillets and our sauce. So, I'm going to take our double cream. So it's only had a couple of minutes there just to soften, take some of the flavour out of the onion, uh, the shallot, but we want that texture, we want it crispy and crunchy. So we're going to take this off the heat now, and we're going to put in our double cream. And this is going to create our sauce for our, um, for our pasta bake. And we've got some lovely grated cheese here. Cheese, one of these things. I mean, I, I was doing demos yesterday in Ideal Homes, and um, we had this big debate about you know keeping it local, keeping it regional, keeping it seasonal. And I think that the other issue is, again, keeping it organic. Um, and we came up with this thing that is buy the best you can. So if you're going to use a mild cheddar, I'd rather not bother using a mild cheddar, buy less mature cheddar and you'll find you need less. Less goes a long, long way. You buy mild cheddar, you're going to grate so much of it up and then you're going to have a lot of fat. So there's the health issue as well. Okay, a little bit of this cheese into our sauce. Not too much, we're going to keep some of that for the top as well. And we're just going to stir that in. And then that's just going to melt down because we don't want it too thin because bearing in mind we've got pasta here which is still quite starchy. We've boiled it, we've washed it, but it's still got a lot of natural starch in there that will help thicken uh, the sauce when it bakes. Okay, so, and the other thing it needs is obviously seasoning. A little bit of salt and pepper goes in. Season again at the end. If you start seasoning too early when it's boiling, as it reduces, you evaporate water. All you do is concentrate whatever's in that pan. Whatever flavor's there, by evaporating water, because that's what steam is, you will end up with a very, very salty, intense um, uh, uh, liquor. So what you need to do is season right at the very end, because we're not going to cook this down anymore. And as I said before, we're going to put a little bit of um, lime in there. Just roll the lime. I'm sure you've seen that all done on the telly and that. The reason they do that, sometimes limes are rock hard, you get no juice out of them. By rolling backwards and forwards, all those little cells of juice that are packed tightly in there, as you crush them, they break, they fracture. So when you do cut them in half to get your juice out, you tend to find you get a lot more juice coming out because you've fractured the edges, okay? And the other way is you pop the whole thing into the microwave about two or three seconds, and as microwaves work from the center out, they vibrate, they create heat by movement. So, so as that movement fractures again from the inside out, the cells, when you come to squeeze it, you get the juice out. And only for two or three seconds. It's not going to come out there um, molten hot. So there's another little tip for you. Right. So there's our sauce. I have another little taste. Just going to give my little spoon a rinse. That's another thing. Health and safety. Oh, I don't know if you're, even, if you're allowed to taste this. So there's no one, no one here from uh, the council. That's good. Lovely. That's great. So. There's our tin mackerel. We've transformed the, the, the liquor that was in there into a sauce. Slightly cheesy, it's got that white wine flavor because that's what the mackerel's cooked in. And we've got our pasta. And basically now, it's just a little bit of assembly. So, I'm gonna take some of our lovely fresh basil. And this is the, the potted one. This is the one you buy in the shops. Um, because it's grown undercover, and especially in this country, we have to. You can actually use the stalks as well. So don't be shy of, of trying to pick all the leaves off um, from the stalks. Chuck them in as well because obviously they've got all that flavor. They've got all that goodness in there. Um, and they're not tough and woody. Going to roughly chop that. And there's this debate about do you, do you tear it or do you chop it? Well, this is all going to get mixed in. 
it's gonna, all you want is the flavor out of it. You're not gonna see the gently torn edges of the basil. They say that it bruises. Well, what's gonna happen to it? It's gonna go into a red hot oven in between loads of sauce of fish. Whether it's bruised or torn or not, it doesn't really matter. What we're trying to do is extract all that flavor. So we're gonna mix that in with our fish. Very, very gently. I'm gonna turn that. And then we're gonna start assembling. And I'm not gonna season the pasta at all because the sauce is very intense and the fish is very well flavored. What you need to do is create a balance. If you season this lot up, by the time it's all put together and we've got cheese on top and in the oven, it will be much, much too rich. You wanna keep it a little bit lighter. So we have this little layer of um, our cooked pasta and I've chosen the ribbons only because that's what we had at the back. And I think that's how we cook at home. You open the cupboard, you see what's in there. You pull it out, you don't, don't particularly go and buy anything specific, um, especially as a standby, because this is the kind of dish that you could knock up very, very last minute, doesn't take long, um, healthy, nutritious, and, uh, and all of the above, really. So all of that mixture goes in there, creating that middle layer, if you wanted to. And I looked at this before we actually um, got to cook it. What I wanted to do was, um, I was going to break it all up, smash it all up, but I just thought the fillets are quite nice as they are, so let's keep them whole and, um, and do a, a sort of a layered uh, a dish. So pasta goes on again, and then we're going to cover the whole lot with the sauce, a little bit of cheese. And this young man to my, uh, to my left is a good old Phil, who's looking Mr. Interested there, arms folded. <laughs> he's been here for the last two days, so he's, he's been... Um, listening to all this waffle that, that us guys are up here giving but um, he's a really nice guy so at the back there all the stuff that's getting done is by him and his him and his lovely assistant who sat behind here watching right so there's our pasta on there on the two layers and we're going to cover it up with our lovely sauce that we made from the tin juices so it just shows you a little bit of application you can come up with something a little bit different and a little bit unusual, and you create a dish from nothing um, that ordinarily maybe you would have just actually done uh, with a salad or something. We've got our more of our cheese. I'm gonna give that a coating on top. And then this is gonna go through the oven. And again, everything's cooked here, so all we're doing is a, is a reheat. So at this stage, you could pop this in the fridge, uh, or let it get cold first, obviously. Pop it in the fridge, and when you need the meal, you just pop it in the oven. Give it about 20 minutes and it's fine, it's done. So a make ahead, great standby but can be made ahead. A little bit of pepper, I'm not gonna put any salt on there because of the cheese. This is a, a mature cheddar, so that's gonna go in the oven. And we're gonna... So that, we're gonna put that onto a gentle heat and now let's have a look at our, um, our pasta. See how that comes out. Lovely. There's our baked pasta dish. So that was from that tin of um, mackerel. You see it bubbling at the edges there. Tin mackerel in white wine sauce, um, you know, is in white wine marinade. It's like, you know, would you actually necessarily buy that? You say, no, no, I'll do my own. But there's no bones in there. It's all been filleted. We're going to just do a little bit of chopped fresh mint. And the reason we do that is because, like this little dribble of good olive oil, so that would come now to the table just before you bring it out to, from the kitchen. You sprinkle on your fresh mint. So what you're gonna get, one, you get color, obviously. But two, you get that fresh aroma of the mint oil coming out. Then you put your good olive oil on. One, it shines, so if you've got candles there, it catches it, it makes it look very, very um, sort of uh, 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 appealing to eat. But also you get that lovely smell of the good olive oil. So there's your first dish, okay? From three tins of fish, we got three different, totally different um, dishes. And what I like about this is it's all pretty instant food. It's all doable at home. It's not really, really chefy. It's all sort of byproduct stuff. It's, and really, you can do any combination or mix you really want. It's all down to you. And what I want to do is show you that tin fish isn't such a bad thing, and the fact that it's sometimes better because it's processed, picked, caught in its prime. So. Come up and have a taste. Give these dishes a go, please. And uh, thank you very much for your time and hopefully see you again. Thank you.